Hi, class. Um, this is going to be my first attempt at video with this uh, new setup. and So we'll see how it goes. And this is activity five. And uh, uh, the one thing I'm concerned about is the size on the window. Let's see how this works. Uh, but I, I think it'll be okay. And, but today we're going to talk about a, a pretty interesting topic. Uh, again, this is uh, a combination or, or a um, kind of relationship between you know mathematics and art. And this does have a, a pretty long history to it and uh, lots of different examples or possibilities. But, you know, we're going to focus more on just the uh, mathematics and art links. And uh, now, Islamic art, uh, first of all, I just wanted to talk about what is Islam. And uh, it's a religion. And one of the largest in the world, in fact, it has been the fastest growing religion in the world for uh, many years now. And some people think it's the second largest religion with over a billion followers. And so Islam is the religion of uh, Muslims. And uh, again, I, I think that anything that would link to such a large group around the world uh, such as Islamic art would be an important uh, thing to talk about. And and it does have some um, ties in with mathematics. Now, not all of Islamic art is created with um, mathematical grids or mathematical formulas. Uh, in fact, uh, for number two here, uh, let's says list four types of Islamic design. Uh, there's really kind of four different groupings uh, the early designs uh, were more, you know, dealt with calligraphy and then kind of turned more into um, ornamental and uh, then um, the uh, later designs kind of started to get more um, ornamental and, and um, picture-like. And but the one we're going to talk about is the group that deals with geometric Islamic design. And so uh, what I want to do is just encourage you to look at this uh, TED talk and it, it gives you kind of an overview of um, a, a way that you can approach on creating uh, geometric Islamic design and uh, they have some good examples in there and kind of starts as a foundation but uh, again this uh, lesson this TED lesson here uh, is a little bit different than you know what we're going to do and but it, it's I think it's only like five minutes long so if you would take a look at that and I'm not going to record that uh, but what I want to go to is then uh, number three, it says list five characteristics of ge geometric Islamic design. And um, first of all, uh, it usually starts from some central point and then emanates outward. So when you draw it, you, you kind of again start at uh, some center and then work your way out uh, from there. And, We'll get to look at an example of that in a minute here then. The uh, other thing is that it's uh, really kind of borderless. You think of it as just going on out uh, forever in a sense. Uh, so it's not designed to be built within a, a particular framing. And uh, the other thing about it is it's, it's made up of a small number of repetitive geometric shapes and um, another thing about it is, is that it is a uh, two-dimensional okay so strictly uh, two-dimensional and not meant to be any kind of like three-dimensional or, or illusionary or anything like that uh, 
and um, is um, also uh, used. Well, there's usually no uh, types of um, figural or, or formal types of people. It's it's again remember based in the religion. So uh, they feel that if you put uh, figures, people, things like that, animals, or whatever, it, it may be that you're trying to show a false gods or so on. So, uh, so it's pretty basic stuff. And um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Just a little review of circles. It says what geometric shape attracts more visual attention uh, than any other geometric form. And of course, that's the circle. And so again, it's, it's you know, really, uh, you could say maybe the most important uh, form or shape that you uh, work with. So a circle, uh, as far as defining a circle, it's a set of points, all the points that are equidistant from some center point. So the center of a circle is really not part of the actual circle. The uh, points that are all equidistant, some distance, or we refer to as radius, from the center out to those points. And here we're supposed to draw and label parts of the circle and so on. And I'm going to uh, just kind of review this. If I can get this to show, Let's say control. There we go. Okay, it's kind of slow. And this is actually not the right one. Okay, let's see if we can get this over here. All right, a little better. And uh, Okay, um, again, the circle is a shape consisting of all points in a plane, a given distance from the center. So, you know, we have the center, and then the distance, or how we size, how big the circle typically are, we say the radius of it, the distance from the center out to a point out here. Or we could talk about the diameter uh, the distance across the circle, it goes through that center also. And um, we we'll come down here and just review a few of these, uh, again, uh, geometry terms. The chord, the line segment, whose ends points are points on a circle. Uh, a secant line is a line that goes through and uh, is an infinite length, and it crosses in two points, and then a tangent line. A tangent line, again, is a line its infinite length, and it intersects the circle at one point. Okay, and those are one-dimensional ideas. Uh, here's another one-dimensional idea. The arc is some part of a circle, and we can see air sector referring to area this is an area that's uh, defined um, from the circle itself and then the center to radii that form that area. And then a segment of the circle doesn't necessarily have the uh, center in it. It just has um, a, remember this uh, was a chord, and then that area that the chord and the line encloses. Okay. All right, so we have um, the parts of the circle. Uh, let's says how many degrees are in a circle. So we have 360 degrees in a circle. Or uh, another way to measure angles is with radians. So it would be 2 pi radians are equal to 360 degrees. 
uh, what are the formulas for area and circumference of a circle? So the area of a circle is uh, pi r squared. Area is two-dimensional, so it has that square in it, the radius squared. And the circumference of a circle is a uh, one-dimensional idea. The distance around the circle is uh, 2 pi r, or pi times the diameter. Okay, so we, we might need those here in a little bit. And then in the next y-coordinate plane, what's the equation of a circle? Okay, so uh, the it will be easier to show it. And um, Okay, so, so this is uh, a little bit easier to see, but the x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equal to r squared. So it's kind of our standard form of the equation of a circle, okay, in standard form here, okay. All right, so we don't need that. And... All right, so let's take a look at, uh, we just had some background, and then now we want to get into the art uh, part of this, uh, this McDonald's Islamic pattern. And uh, what this is here is I was in a uh, McDonald's one day, and I, have, I was standing in line, and I, I looked up at the window. So that's a window covering in a McDonald's. And I looked at it, and I thought, Wow, that's kind of a neat design, very geometric. You know, I liked it. And I thought, oh, I've got to find out what that is. And uh, so I looked into it and saw, and that's a um, seven-circle Islamic grid. So this is a pattern in itself, but this can also be used to make lots and lots and lots of other types of Islamic designs, some uh, geometric Islamic designs. And so our classroom assignment one here, it says construct a seven circle Islamic grid using a compass and ruler. And again, if you have a compass and ruler, great. Uh, you can try it. Uh, some people like working with the compass, some people don't. Uh, if we were in a classroom, we would be, I would be passing out the compasses and trying to encourage you to at least try these things by hand before we jump on the computer. And uh, I have a link here that's going to help me out with showing you how this is done. And again, you can do this with a um, illustrator or whatever you want to use uh, to get the circles. But I'm going to pull this up. In fact, let me bring this over now. That link. Okay, so uh, under resources, if we go to this Islamic art and geometric design, so we're going to select that and scroll down here to, let's see, oh, download the resource. All right. And we're going to scroll down. Okay, so here's activity one. So what you'll do is, uh, again, you get a piece of paper and a straight edge, and you're going to draw a horizontal line to start out with here. Okay. And then in, in the center on here, you're going to put this circle in here first. So this will be the starting point. All right. And then... Uh, if you kind of ignore these blue lines, here, just one black line. And uh, you'll see that that circle may intersects this line here. So the focus is on the points of intersection. 
those points of intersection create the new center for the next circle. So, so right here, the line and the circle intersect right there. So that's the center of another circle that I draw. And again, that's really the main important thing to remember when you're doing this. But so now, again, see this original circle here in the middle and this straight line intersect right there. And you'll see that they drew another circle. And all these circles have the same radius. If you have a compass, you could set it for about one inch. And you would get a nice pattern about this size on a page. So if you look at this right here that we created, we've created more intersection points. So here is a point of intersection right here. And you'll notice that that point right there became the center for another circle. Okay. This point right here is this point, And that became that center. Same radius. Okay, again, for all of these. And then there was a point there of intersection course there that was the point of intersection that's the circle that center is right there we got this circle and then so if you count we have one two three four five six and then the original starting one we have seven so that is how we get our seven circle starting point right so that's kind of we just started and then we're going to go and continue that until we get to this. So if you keep going, okay, so you start here again, and then you're going to put a circle around that point and another one and that point, and, the, and then you'll see it'll keep growing outward. So remember, we designed, we started in the middle, central point, small number of geometric shapes where we just have a circle to start our grid with. And then, you know, that's one of the big properties of the um, the uh, seven circles Islamic grid is that it's made up of a series of circles. All Islamic designs are really made up of parts of or circles itself. So this thing goes out. So now uh, I do want to show you, you now you work on that and you should end up with this. Okay. So that's activity one. And if you're using a compass and it doesn't turn out real good, then on Canvas under Unit 5, uh, I have a grid there you can download. So you got the grid there already made. And again, you can just... Uh, use that for assignment two. Okay, so that's that's on. And then you can look through here and see some designs. They, they've got some neat stuff and show you how you can add to this, make some different design, put some lines in. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, have some of the stars, six plus eight pointed stars and so on. So you can go online and look or just make up your own design. So let's go and put this down and for classroom assignment two use the seven circle grid that you made to create a design attach your results okay and here's some links you can go and look or you can go online and get some ideas so classroom assignment two shouldn't take you long and you come up with design so let's go ahead and move forward and uh polar coordinates so why polar coordinates? What are polar coordinates? Well, it's a different way to place points in a plane. We have the XY Cartesian coordinate plane. So a, most of you are familiar with the ordered pairs, the X comma Y. And this is different. Why do we need different ones? Well, because the XY coordinate plane doesn't really work that great. Uh, with mathematics and design. It's probably the worst one overall that you would want to use. So uh, polar grids are very popular in design. All right, 
right? So uh, this is just a site, Wolfram Alpha, probably maybe the top, top math software in the world. It's Wolfram Alpha, but, um, and they, they have a pretty big educational site. I, every now and then I'll go there and get stuff. But if you really want a pretty high-end math site, this is, this is where you want to go. But polar coordinates, uh, what they're showing here is if, if I want to identify this point in this plane, it looks like the XY plane, like the X axis and the Y axis kind of thing. What you do is you start here and you rotate. You'll see they're rotating this initial side around till they get to that point. And they're measuring the distance from here to here. So you need an angular measure and you need a linear measure. So we have theta and r. So the coordinates are basically written in terms of ordered pairs again. They're not x, y, they're called um, r comma theta, ordered pairs. And the r, the radial coordinate, theta, the angular coordinate, okay? And they say that these relate to the x, y. So x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r uh, sine theta. So if you want to do conversions, you can do that and so on. Okay, so that's the polar grid. And um, what's the difference between Cartesian grid and polar grid? Uh, you get different designs. I mean, one places points differently and you can uh, come up with a difference uh, in your output from the same function. And so um, they both place points again, but uh, one is easier than the other in given situations. The Cartesian coordinate plane we used with the illusions because we were doing line illusions and that worked best. Polar grids work with circles, things that are going round and so on. Parts of circles, things that look like circles and so on. All right, number 12. When is a polar graph more? Well, we just kind of answered that. Yeah. When is a polar graph more useful? Uh, again, when we're working with uh, circular things, rotations, so on. And... Uh, Let me pull this over here and see if we can see this. It goes pretty quick. But let's see if we can reset that. The snapshots, are they, they going to work? So they're showing here that this r theta of 3 cosine theta plus 0.5 in a polar grid will look like this. In a rectangular grid, it would just kind of look like this. So this is kind of going around. We want things to go around. We're going to use polar coordinates. Same with this one here. You'll see this one goes around this way, right? Making a nice kind of pattern. It stays on the crowd. This thing just goes on off infinity infinitely in both ways. Uh, we'll look at one more. Here's the polar version of this equation and the rectangular version of the exact same equation in xy coordinate, right? So it's kind of a neat looking butterfly type of thing. This just kind of doesn't look like anything. Okay, so that's that's the idea of rectangular. We can get some really early polar. We can get some nice shapes and so on. Okay, uh, what's the equation of a circle in polar form? Now I'm going to uh, just go and show you on Wikipedia here. Uh, again, since we're not meeting, I typically would go and explain a little bit more about this on the board. I um, We're not going to use it. But 
So if we get down the link, get down a little ways, and polar, here we go. So in polar coordinates, the equation of a circle is this. So we had that other equation of a circle that we looked at, and I wanted you to see that and then see the difference in here. Now this is, Im this is uh, implicitly defined. So if you want it in terms of a function, uh, it says in a general case, the equation can be solved for r giving this. So this is our equation of a circle in polar form. All right. Now, if you look at this one right here, though, we're going to uh, make it simple and not go off of the center uh, very far. So this thing is going to become this. Okay. So if we remember r equal 2a cos theta, where a is equal to 1, a is the radius. So uh, that's going to be 2 cos theta. And then uh, we're going to come back to this right here. Okay. Uh, right to polar equation. We got that in function form. We just looked at that. All right. So for classroom assignment three, what is the seed of life? Well, it's kind of a building block, and if you if you uh, look at like the um, sacred geometry, uh, sacred geometry is uh, kind of a neat look at the foundations of life. So it goes through and talks about how geometry can explain uh, the foundations of life, and uh, the seed of life is kind of one of those building blocks, and you build off of that. And I just want to show you this because it'll look very similar to something we've already talked about. So this is a building block of uh, life in the um, sacred geometry. All right, so classroom assignment three, construct a seed of life using the polar form of a circle and the graph for now. This right here, again, we're not using graph for if you have a Mac uh, and you want to use graph for that's okay. We're going to use uh, decimals. And it says attach the results list the equation used to attachment. All right, so let's go ahead and get into Desmos. And I had it here somewhere, but okay, let's open it up. Okay, so okay, so again, desmos.com, Desmos, and they they keep improving this. It's getting better, uh, and I did find uh, in uh, when we talked uh, on Wednesday, we I said if I was looking for some way to get some um, figures, I. Desmos does have some in there. They're just kind of adding to it. I still didn't quite get what I wanted, so that's okay. Now, so we're going to build the uh, seed of life. Now, we're going to go back and think about how we designed uh, that seven-circle Islamic grid. And we'll see in history how these things kind of link that that Islamic grid wasn't imagined basically in you know 500 AD. Uh, it was well before that, and I can show you here back with the sacred geometry where this was seen before. Now uh, we're going to go in here and put in polar coordinates. When I type in r equal to one, okay, I get a circle, right? All right. So radius of one, and in polar coordinates, it's pretty easy to draw a circle. You just have to say what the radius is, and you'll get one centered at the origin. Okay. And I need another equation. So my next circle, think of this as the line we initially drew when we were doing the Islamic grid. Okay, that was the first line we started with this x-axis. And then um, we put a circle here in the middle. And then this was a point of intersection right here. 
So that means I got to put another circle right there. And how do we do that? Well, the uh, the idea is, and that uh, equation, I, I said, okay, remember this one equation where it was r equal to uh, 2a cosine of theta. I said the a was equal to 1, so it's really 2 times 1 or 2 here. But we had 2 cosine of theta. And I'm going to put in here, uh, well, nothing right now. Just leave that as pi. Okay. So you'll see that equation was the equation of a circle in polar form. But it didn't have all that other stuff on it because the angle was 0. So a lot of that other stuff went to 0. A went to 1. And the other stuff was gone. Okay, so this thing was on the axis. And the stuff that was in the middle here was also zero. Okay. All right, so there was our first circle. And then we drew one over here, which really isn't how you do it. You're just not supposed to do that, but that's fine. Uh, the next one, we have this one. And now I got this point of intersection right here. Okay, so I have two equations up here, r equal 1, r equal 2 cosine theta. And these are points of intersection. So from a math standpoint, uh, let me see if I can pull this to the front. All right, so from a math standpoint, and again, I'm going to attempt the draw with this thing and oops I got my pen all right so uh there we go okay so I have I have r equal to one r equal to cosine theta so Points of intersection you solve by solving systems of equations. So we think of this as a system. I want to know when, see the r's are equal, I want to know where the other value is equal. So when, if you remember in uh, algebra, uh, to be able to solve a system, if you have them written like this, where they're both equal to the same thing, then that means these two things are equal. So I can set one equal to two cosine of theta. I don't know what that's doing there. All right, so one equal two cosine theta to solve that. Let me just tap that off of there. Yeah. And then to solve this for theta or cos theta, I can divide by two. So I have one divided by two equal to cosine theta. Ah. So what did I just do? There we go. So the uh, now what I need to do here is um, think about now this is a special angle uh, and we know that cosine has to deal with the x value. So we're really thinking about what's the x value on that graph. And this is up, this is, uh, when, when is cosine of theta equal to 1 half? And let me just kind of move this over a little bit. If you'll notice uh, on here, this is, uh, Cosine of theta equal to one half. So, so this right here, this point, let me see, one, two, three, four, five. So two and a half. It's right in the middle. So it's halfway, right? So it's it's one half. Now that's, and think of it as x equal to one half. You know, think, okay, what's my y value right there, right? Or what is my angle anyway? So 
if we look this angle from here out, that would be the square root of two, the square root of two, which would be right there. But this is a special angle. This is actually uh, cosine of theta is one half at uh, 60 degrees or pi divided by three. So that, again, I just, and again, you kind of remember that from trig. If you took trig, this thing is, so it's a little past half. Here would be 45 degrees this way. And now this is 60. Of course, that's 90, right? This way up here, 90. So that's 60. All right, so, so again, uh, that's when theta is equal to pi divided by 3. All right. All right, so we're going to need that. Put that down. Now, so what we're doing is taking, we're working in rotations. We're not doing horizontal vertical. Okay, basically that's the X, Y look at it. When we place, we think rotational, right? We go out, rotate. And so this thing, we really just want to rotate to circle around. We want this center to rotate up to there, right? That's the center of that blue circle. It's going to rotate right up to there, pi divided by three units. So that means we're going to take R equal to two cosine of theta minus pi divided by three. So again, we just took this circle here, took the center, rotated along this other circle. This is kind of our pattern, right? We follow around that circle. We take that, we move it up. Right there's our center for our next circle, right? So that's good. So we're just learning that this number in here is a uh, the rotational value of whatever this thing is. In this case, it's a circle. So, so good. So now we got to take and then got to rotate this thing some more over to here. We just created another line of intersection right there. So we're going to take this. We're going to rotate it another pi divided by three units and put another circle. So R equal to two cosine of theta minus two pi divided by three. So we got that point of intersection. We just took that whole thing, that shape, rotated it around here, right there. And of course, we just created another point of intersection. And I'm gonna uh, just copy paste this. And so I don't type that in anymore. And then that makes this. And if you're kind of following along, this is like one pi divided by three, two pi divided by three. So this one would be three pi divided by three. Paste. All right, one, two, three. So hopefully you're guessing four. And five. Yep, we got it, right? This one was the first one here. This one was at zero pi divided by three, right? No angular measure. One, two, three, four, five. Then we have this. So we have a one, two, three, four, we have six circles plus the one in the center. And there's our beginning of our, our Islamic grid. So this is now called the seat of life, but we're missing one thing. We want to get a circle that's going to go right around all these. 
And here, look, radius of one, remember that? Yeah, so we can get a circle by just saying, well, it looks like it's going out to two. So we can do r equal to two, and we'll get that. And so there's our seed of life. Let's take, go over here to tools, grid, axis, 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 take all that off so we can kind of see it. And to change colors, you can, let's see, if you want to make it blue, blue, I hold this down, click on blue, hold that down. And we can leave it like that. <clears throat> so you want to kind of copy and paste into your activity sheet. So there's our grid. And then um, let's go back to the, so we're done with activity three. Use graph to create that. Flower of life is basically just, it's the seed of life evolved into, you just put two more rows of circles around that one that we just did. And the equation, the general equation of a circle in polar form, you need that. We kind of did the easy one there, but you need the other one to, to get this. <clears throat> so we're going to skip that. It says right here, uh, use grapher to do the flower of life if time exists. Again, you know, it's I'm not there in a the classroom to really help explain. And it's... Um, if you're interested in the math and you like it, then yeah, you know, go ahead and you can work on that. All right, so designing with circles in general, it's nice that, uh, you know, the Islamic stuff, that's all kind of the same size circle, but you can create a lot of really neat stuff. A lot of famous stuff uh, was created with, um, let's try that again. With circles, one of them, Barcelona chair, uh, very famous. This was, I think, 1920, 25. It says they're like 29. Here we go. International and, and uh So, uh, but this, I know Larry Thompson has one in his office. I've seen this different places. Uh, I, I remember the movie 300 Days of Summer. At the very end of the movie, uh, the one actor uh, sits down in one of these chairs before they interview uh, him and the girl. I think the girl's name was Autumn or something. Uh, but pretty famous. And again, if you look at how the, the, the design is very simple. This arc right here is a part of a circle. This is part of a circle and this. So what they did is they used three different parts. Now let's see if I can. Um, and again, I don't have my, I don't have my materials with me uh, where this is shown at. You'd have to Google that uh, again. And I don't have time to really look it up right now doing this video. But, but again, basically this arc is one big circle. This is part of a smaller circle, and this one is smaller. So, so I'm gonna attempt this. This is gonna be tough to attempt here. So let's see now. Get that thing out of there. And, but this side, this this big part right here. Okay. If we look at it from the side. It's just a big circle. Oh, that's terrible. Okay. So that's this part right here. That's this part right here. Okay. And then this part right here goes down on that other side. So, so this is the bottom parts down here, a smaller one. And this is up above it on the other side. There. So this is kind of 
So this is the back. It sits here. That chair. This is harder than I thought. Okay. <laughs> and this is the one leg uh, going this way. And the other one goes up that way. Okay. So pretty bad. I got to work on that. All right, let me get rid of that. And this. And the uh, other thing I have here is, um, let's see. Just another example, unable to open. Okay, so that's fine. We don't need to open that. But poster art, if you look at the early, like in the 1920s, uh, poster art was kind of big. And a lot of it was just basic geometric shapes. Most of the designs were created with different lines and circles and squares of different sizes. And the, um, the one I wanted to see if I could bring up this Apple logo and design. And we'll take a minute and look at that. And I've got to go to uh, let's see let me grab one so I'm gonna open up a PowerPoint file I have this on And it's taken a few minutes to open up. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see if I can get this over here. Here we go. Okay, and this has some designs on it. There's some different circles. You'll see, you obviously can see all the different circles that are used in something like that. Uh, these are some other just little things here. So uh, here's another one, uses circles and arcs of circles. And uh, there's actually a theorem in mathematics that states that any curve is a uh, series of circles. It's a combination of a series of circles. So anything that's not a straight line is actually made up of a series of circles, uh, which is, uh, again, the Islamic design, they, that's basically, they said the same thing, that we can create any design with lines and circle parts of circles. And it was true. And so you get to see the different design here with circles to do something like that. So with classroom assignment four, this is kind of what you're shooting for. You're going to create something uh, by using circles to help you create that, right? And then here's uh, the blue sky. So we see that that was design elements, circles, start creative. And I'm going to get down here to the Apple logo and kind of click through this. But it uses the golden ratio. And you see they have the Fibonacci numbers here. 21, 13, 13. This is 8, 5, 3, 2, 1, and 1, actually, the sizes. You see these little blocks, right? It's a 2 by 2. It's 4, 3 by 3, 9 blocks in there and so on. So, so that's how they got started. And then they drew the circles inside of those blocks. Whoops, I'll start back again. And then use those as the sizes for the logo curves, the Apple logo curves. And so they have the different sizes. And I'm going to go through this quickly. You can look at this. And then they started to... They laid out the circles and then started to create the arcs. 
from that. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so classroom assignment four, create a real life design that includes uses of different sizes of circles. And uh, so lots of examples. And there's some projects on uh, online that you can look at uh, of the Islamic designs that they use. Uh, and then just this last part, uh, I do get some students that ask me about this. And this, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, number 25, if you look at this link here, it kind of will go in and show you that. This was one of his famous drawings, but use graph, or again, we're going to use Desmos to graph the six basic trig functions for a trig grid. Trig grids are very, very popular in design and some of the older uh, car designs like car companies and so on that didn't have the computing uh, before the 70s, really before the 80s. But a lot of what they would do is they would draw trig functions and then you know, they'll use those arcs to help them create and lots of uh, design. So we're gonna go back to and if I can find it. All right, so I'm just going to uh, finish up with just uh, putting in these y equals sine x. Oops. We got six, and I'm just trying to save a little bit of time. Sign. Cosine. And if any of you remember, and if you had trig, uh, T A N, tangent. But that's even uh, got a lot of nice different shapes and curves that you can work off of uh, and work with pieces or parts of this. And um, But we got some other ones here we can add. Sine, cosine, tangent, and then they're inverses. Uh, cosecant and secant. And then cotangent. Uh, I don't know what that is. Okay, so let me. I don't know what happened there. Uh, okay, so y equal to uh, cotangent of x. So this is like a trig grid. And if you like, you're looking for certain types of curves, you can use this. Uh, and you can maybe just work with some of them. And let's take this one off too. And then you say, so you want to do something like with these, and then you can further uh, work with this and change them and say, okay, well, that's kind of more what I wanted. And let's do 0.5. All right, so I'm starting to get a design in there. Uh, 0.8, and let's do 0.2. All right, so, so now I kind of got a pattern maybe I, I like. And I, I want to go with that. So that's that's kind of how it works. You just have those. As, it's parametric design. We talked about that. Having already some kind of basic structure to work with. And then we might even want to make these a little bit higher. So sine of 
we'll make this uh, 1.5. Maybe that's a little bit too high. Y equal to how about 1.5. Three. Oops, one point two. Oh, there we go. So something like that. Okay. Um, well, that's pretty much it. I was hoping for about an hour on the video. It looks like we're right around an hour. And if you have any questions, you know, don't hesitate to email. Um and I think you'll find out this won't take you long to complete. We were able to get through everything uh, and then uh, think about your projects. You can look on Canvas again. Uh, I've got some of the former projects and I can put more up there too if you want to see more. So uh, again, stay, stay healthy and um, you know, we'll be talking to you guys soon.